Hi, I'm Karen Moore, Senior VP of Operations and the Chief Nurse at Lawrence General Hospital. During the COVID uh, pandemic surge, uh, Lawrence, the city of Lawrence itself, was a hotspot um, for COVID intensity. And our uh, regional community hospital and busy emergency room was hit hard uh, with COVID. Today, we decided to participate in this invitation from uh, the Schwartz Center uh, because we are so proud uh, of our preparations, our workers, and especially um, our frontline workers dealt with um, a severity of illness and seeing death and seeing miracles uh, happen in, in a way that they had never experienced before. So who we have with us uh, today um, are several people from a specific unit which at one point we knew we had to dedicate a unit to be a full um, COVID unit. And uh, so these staff in particular uh, took care of all COVID positive patients. So I'm gonna ask you all to introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about just why you do what you do. Mary Lynn, we'll start with you. Uh, my name is Mary Lynn Snow. I am the nurse manager of H2, which did transform into an all positive COVID unit during our initial surge of uh, the COVID pandemic. Um, I do what I do because I'm compassionate and uh, very passionate about uh, workflow changes and uh, high quality care that can be delivered to patients. Great, so how'd you feel when you were told that your unit was gonna be the all positive unit? We had a lot of rapid transformations during yeah. that time. Um, we were all very supported in these changes. It became evident very quickly that we were going to need to open an all positive COVID unit, um, as you know. And so very quickly in uh, an afternoon, about five o'clock at night, the decision was made. So we were all here late into um, the wee hours of the night, transforming the unit. Um, as best we could with the information that we had at the time uh, to best support the community that we serve. Yeah, must have been daunting as a nurse manager to think how you're gonna support your staff through all of this, mm -hmm. because that's a, a big load to take. Rose, could you introduce yourself? Um, my name is Rose Ames. I'm the unit coordinator of H2. Um, I've been with the hospital 25 plus years altogether. Mm -hmm. I just, I've, always loved my job. I, mm -hmm. I just love working with the patients and the visitors and all the staff. It's it's a very rewarding job knowing I've gone home at the end of the day and, and done the best that I can to help someone. My name is Donna Howitt. I am the unit coordinator on pediatrics. At the time, I had volunteered to go over to H2 to help them. Um, I love my job. I love taking care of people just enjoy helping people. <laughs> I really do. And obviously like a feel... challenge too. <laughs> I do, I do, I she, do. She and... walked right into the fire <laughs> voluntarily, right? Amazing. Yes. Amazing. yes. Amazing. Definitely interesting to be part of that yeah. for sure. Well, thank you for willing um, to share today, you know, some important um, experiences and lessons learned from this. Let's get in with our, our questions uh, specifically what it has been like for you. And Donna, let's just keep going with you. The time for me, it, it was hard to watch people be sick. Um, I really felt the need to be with these ill people that were probably passing or hopefully going home. Compassion for me is sitting with them. I, try, I, I think that's what I wanna say. Sitting with them and talking with them, you know, learning who they are as mm -hmm. people um, and and them thanking me for doing what I was doing for them because their families couldn't be there. And how did you feel about it? Sad. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It got pretty emotional inside my body. Yeah. Um, and then it felt good for me when I was bringing them home. Was it hard to come to work every day? Towards the end it was. Yeah. Um, it was hard to get up. And, um, not be able to um, talk to people about it. Some people didn't understand when you would talk to them, why why are you crying? And it's because, and I would try to explain to them because it's, it's a lot of death very quickly and people being by themselves, mm -hmm. which to me, you should never be alone when you're gonna pass away. Yeah, it's a lot to carry. Yes, so um, 
I spoke with my doctor, you know, and took care of myself so I could Good. learn to cope yeah. with the anguish yeah. of myself. Rose, what was the experience like for you, and um, how was compassion a part of it? It's very hard. It's very hard to transition to what I've done every day to being a full COVID unit and seeing what was going on around me, and it was extremely depressing, and I, I had a very hard time. I was bitter. I was angry. But at the same time, when I would hear people say, I didn't sign up for this, I would say, oh, yes, you did. We all did. Mm -hmm. We all did. This is what they need us to do now, and this is what we're going to do. And this is how we're going to do it. Yeah. And you sit there in the middle of the doctors, the nurses, the patients. And that's families, what's hard with my job um, sometimes is yeah. that I'm in the center, and this is all going on around me. You yeah. know, the nurses, the families, the doctors, yeah. the, the phone calls, and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and dealing with all of everyone's emotions right and how did compassion come into play because you're right there were some people we're all human uh, i don't care if you're a doctor or a nursing assistant or a housekeeper you know we see fear play out right yeah. people are our employees you know mothers and fathers and children and workers and how did compassion for that come to play with the team i myself is have always been compassionate but Working COVID gave compassion a whole new meaning between all of us. Yeah. You know, among the among team. all yeah. of us, the team, the doctors, you know, we, we shared a very special relationship with Greater Lawrence. Yeah. And and they came through for us and they were amazing. Um, so these are the physicians who actually staffed the they unit. Yeah. Um, uh, they, they were geographically assigned and 24 they were, 7 they were on they that were floor assigned to the unit and they did the most amazing job uh, not just taking care of our patients but i think you know dealing with us employees as well yeah the staff and and the team as a whole we work together yeah. amazingly well yeah. let's move to you mary lynn um how did this experience play out for you particularly again how is compassion a part of it so this time is obviously the most challenging time of my career um, it has been uh, a whirlwind of emotions as described previously we were recapping a couple of the stories you know the compassionate stories in preparation for this and it's just amazing that the stories abound we had a nurse um, very early on when we were having one of our first COVID patients who we knew would pass away she had gotten in touch with the family, understood who this patient was, knew how very religious she was, and that you know family couldn't enter and visit and be at the bedside. So she took off her own religious necklace and gave it to the patient and let her wear that as she passed away that evening. Wow. Those are the stories that we remember. Mm -hmm. I remember Rose in particular, she uh, made a real connection with two daughters of a dying uh, father, and she sat at that, that man's bed and as he passed. Um, at the end of his life because she felt such a connection for, for those daughters and for that patient. So these are the stories that we'll remember. And uh, honestly, this was, you know, the silver lining, the best team building experience that any team could ever have um, from the, the kitchen staff straight through to the healthcare team. So mm -hmm. um, this will forever bond us. But what were some of the challenges that you experienced and, and how have you coped? We'll go back to Donna, can you identify a challenge? Going to the hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> <For her place. laughs> um, and, and having people come over, I didn't get to have my grandson come over, I didn't mm -hmm. um, get to have my stepdaughter come over. It definitely affected me at home. Things were not the same, so. I think this is an important point that, you know, you, your caregivers all, I would go on the unit and everybody gowned up, masked, gloves, um, and you come in and you're in that uh, environment, but then you need to go home, right, and protect your families and also not have the usual things in your life um, that might help you cope with this. Right. So anything in particular that was good that helped you cope? 
um, being able to FaceTime with my grandson. Uh -huh. That was helping well, technology. Help I could see him. Yeah. Talking to my fiance. <laughs> he, was, he was great about it, very compassionate person, mm -hmm. and listened to me and would listen to me cry. And yeah. I felt better after. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a, cope, a way of coping. It is. Yes. It is a way of taking care of yourself. Right. How about you, Rose? Um, I think the biggest challenge was leaving it here and not taking it home. Mm -hmm. Um, but that was completely impossible. There was no leaving it. What you spoke of, you know, being all gowned up and, you know, it wasn't just taking all that off at the end of the shift and leaving it in the bin. And when you walked out the door, it was just another day. It wasn't, it was taking it home and home life was very difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, I was stressed out to the max and I was taking it out on my, on my husband and, and, you know, thinking that he understood when he really didn't, um, not being able to see the, my parents, who I'm extremely mm -hmm. close to, you know, we would have weekly meetings in their driveway, and I was just angry at that. What did you do to cope? Honestly. Eventually, anyway, <laughs> right after we feel all this. I didn't say. cope well during yeah. it. I wasn't sleeping. I was waking up sick to my stomach every morning and, and not knowing what we were walking into every day. Yeah. Relied on some meditation during my quiet time. You know, I'm a very early riser and at four o'clock in the morning when the world is asleep, I would I would meditate quietly mm -hmm. and just kind of try to connect with myself before I could come back here and connect with everyone else. Excellent. You know, I love your metaphor. Uh, it struck me that we take off our PPE mm -hmm. in the patient area. When we go home, we don't have PPE. Right. Exactly. And um, when, do, when do you take off the PPE and, uh, you right. know, take care of yourself? Right. Uh, how about you, Mary Lynn? What did you observe about the challenges yeah. and sure. your own uh, ability to cope with it? Sure. Uh, a lot of pressure on you as a nurse yeah, manager. Yeah, yeah, definitely. 24-7. Um, yeah, yeah the, the 24 hour responsibility of making sure this unit ran smoothly. Um, the biggest thing was how quickly the acuity jumped. We were, you know, a med surge unit that really transformed into this step down unit with this high acuity population. How do I support the patients? How do I support the staff? How do I get the support that I need, which I'm very lucky to work for an organization that supported me throughout the whole thing. Um, so it, those were always my biggest worries um, in, in my role. Mm -hmm. It was mentioned, um, about this being ongoing in the greatest team building uh, thing that could have happened, you know, uh, not, not that we would wish for it, uh, but it could be a silver lining. How have you and your colleagues connected and supported each other since then? We all share a bond that just amazes me. All of us that work together, there's a bond that no one can ever break. Um, we cry together, we laugh together. We were scared to death together, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't have wanted to do it with any other team than the team that I work with. How about you, Tana? Same, I could reach out to Mary Lynn and speak with her, and Rose was very supportive. Everybody on that floor was great. We talked to each other, have lunch together, kind of share stories a little bit. Um, I made new friends there. Mm -hmm. Forever friends. Forever friends. Forever yes. friends, you call it great. <laughs> forever friends because nobody could ever experience such a thing and not walk away having a bond with people. I think about them all the time. I just can't give her enough credit for what she did. Thank coming from a very small, coming from a very small pediatric unit and coming into this, this war zone, something she, I am sure, not, not that any of us did experience anything like that, but she was amazing, just amazing, and I, I, I can't think of it. I felt like being next door to them every day on a daily basis, that I needed to go help them. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine trying to do all that without any extra help. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was in my heart to do it. I wanted to do it desperately. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any uh, so as they thoughts on your part? Yeah, yeah. as they said, I, you know, I echo the sentiments. We had real open and honest conversations about what was going on. Nobody was ever judged for how they were feeling about what we were going through. 
Um, and I really think that continues uh, still to this day. You know, we're still in the midst of this. It doesn't look quite like it did in the spring, um, but this is an ongoing, open, transparent conversation that we continue to have about our fears and our, our victories and um, the good things that came out of it and, and the things that we need to do differently next time. Mm -hmm. So I think that is definitely um, a silver lining in all of this. Right. Well, I've heard from all of you, it is the caring and connection that gets you through it. And um, all I know is how appreciative the patients and families were of everything that you did. And this was really um, incredibly courageous, heroic. You know, thank you. Thank you for everything.